Good evening. I mean, good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. My name is Kenyatta Jackson, and I will be your moderator for this class session. I would like to remind everyone to silence all cell phones and any other electrical devices at this time so it will not disturb the speakers. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to show and prove to you the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operate throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Chicago Northside Zoom class was established in the year of 2007. And at this time, I would like to introduce you to school officials. The Dean of the Northside Chicago Zoom class is Dr. John Quait, and the president is Dr. Patrick Latirtu. In this school, we use the true, correct, original names and titles of the Father, the Word of Son, and of the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. Original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh, it has been properly substituted by the word Lord. The true title of the word of Son is Elohim. It has been properly substituted by the word God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. And his name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove to you that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. And neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 14 to 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source and substance, limit and balance of everything. Now we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. Now we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That means having a shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the creator during the time he, the savior during the time he walked the earthquake? A further understanding of this name 
and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses the top of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The Chicago Northside aims of the class are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. And second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. And third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. And fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. And sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. And seventh is to discern and, and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. And eighth, is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can and must be saved saving in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today we will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Shaquita Mays, and we'll, our scripture lesson is Mark the 11th chapter, which will be read by Dr. Patrick Leturity. May we please have our prayer. Good afternoon, class. Um, let us all bow our hearts and minds. Dear Heavenly Father, Yahweh, our Elohim, through your dear son, Yahshua the Messiah, we thank thee for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, keeping our hearts in faith and full assurance of you, Yahshua. We ask that we that you continue to keep us in a in in these perilous times. Um to continue to give us an understanding of your purpose, your pattern, and your plan, and also to give us revelations of you so that our faith would be assured and we can stand in this evil day. We want to give all praise and honor to our Father, Yahweh Elohim, through you, Yahshua. And let us also uh, let us all say hallelujah.
Okay. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. I'll be reading out of the King James Version of the Bible, imposing the true names all from the online King James Bible. This is Mark, the 11th chapter. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Beth Bethage and Bethany and at the Mount Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples. And he said unto them, go your way into the village against, over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, you shall find a cult tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if and if any man say unto you, Why do ye the why do ye this? And ye shall amen, and say ye that yet yeah, that the master have need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found a colt tied by the door without a place where two ways met, and loosed him, and certain of men, and certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosen the colt? And they said uh, unto them that even Yahshua had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Yahshua and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him, and many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off of the tree and strode them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of Yahweh. Hosanna in the highest. And Yahshua entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And, and he that looked round about upon all things, and now even tide was come, and he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. With the twelve. And on the morrow, when they came from Bethany, he was a hungry, and he and he seeing a fig tree afar off, having uh, uh, having off having leaves, he came as happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And Yahshua answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee thereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. And, the, and they came to Jerusalem, and Yahshua went into the temple and began to cast out them and that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tablets of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through, uh, through, the, through the temple. And he taught and sang unto them, Is this not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made, you have made it a den of thieves? And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and they sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because of all the people that were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out to the city. And in the morning they passed by and they saw the fig tree was dried up from the roots. And Peter, Peter calling to remembrance, what I mean, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Yahshua answering and said unto them, have faith in Yahweh. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what thing, Soever ye desire it, when ye pray, believe that thou that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. For I mean, if ye have aught against any, that 
that your father also have, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. But if you forgive not, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive you of your trespasses. And they, and they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes, and they said, and the elders, and said unto him, by what authority does doest thou these things? And he gave thee this authority to do these things. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question and answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was it from heaven or was or of man or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves saying, if we, if we shall say from heaven, then he will say, why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they, they fear the people. For all the men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Yahshua, we cannot tell. And Yahshua answering that said unto them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. And that was Mark the 11th chapter. <laughs> I cut it off because you was. Oh, it's, it's, okay. Okay. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's good. You good. You cut it off. <laughs> You put it on me. Okay, thank you for the scripture lesson, Dr. Uh, Patrick Latuitu, and thank you for the prayer, Dr. Shaquita Mays. We'll have a selection from the Northside Choir. Can to sing in the name of Yahshua? Can to sing in the name of Yahshua? We came to sing in his name. We came to sing in his name. We came to sing in the name of oh, Joshua. We came to bring in the name of oh, Joshua. We came to bring in the name. Oh, Yahshua. We came to pray. We came to pray. We came to pray. Oh, Yahshua. We came to teach in the name. Oh, Yahshua. We 
Thank you, Chicago Northside Choir. And for our spurt, I want to remind everyone, please make sure your cell phones are silenced and any other electrical devices so we'll, no, we'll not disturb the speakers when they come forth from the floor. And the first speaker for this afternoon's session will be Dr. Baron Taylor. Dr. Taylor. Thank you. Give his voice right. Let's say uh, hello again, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Really happy to know something about my career. To be able to say something about it to someone maybe in need, and then, and also to know that uh, it's not me, but uh. It's a thing, and it's not us, it's a Thank thing you. that we've learned and that's been taught in this school, you know, uh, and it comes by way of vision, divine vision and divine revelation, you know, um, and I try myself to stay focused uh, on a pattern that was, uh, has been thoroughly explained, you know, by the vision, you know, this whole, this is a vision. This charge depicted, and the vision was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 1931, you know, uh, where he, uh, where, where Yahweh Elohim showed him, you know, he called him up and showed him. Uh, before that, he, uh, he was a walking bibli bibliomaniac, but he didn't know the purpose, you know, but nevertheless, he had some things uh, that had was taught in his his church that were uh, didn't seem right. You know, I think that's all of us. You know, at least, or at least most of us. You know, that went to churches like something that doesn't seem right. And um, and not only that, uh, you know, some the things really all things weren't being explained. You just when I was in church, we were just reading the Bible, you know, and uh, admiring uh, the events and the, the people uh, who will carry those events out, you know. Um, and that's what it was, really. And, and you know what? That leads to a worship of uh, men and, you know, so-called saints. You know, that saints are just made up, you know, Roman Catholic Church, uh, that word, but it leads uh, to a uh, 
a uh, worshiping of men and uh, characters and, and events. You know, just like we do, it's come, you know, all through down the ages of dispensation, just like we do down here. Uh, what we have done, whether it's uh, uh, entertainment, uh, people in the entertainment industry, you know, athletics, it doesn't matter. Whether it's uh, Joel Olstein, it could be Joel Olstein, <laughs> maybe your pastor, oh, well, he, he did something, oh my goodness, you know. But yeah, we didn't had to learn anything, so it's good to come down here and to and to hear it and to, uh, know that it's by a pattern, you know, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, we got to stick with that pattern. Uh, you know, it's, it's of the utmost important, vitally important. You, know, you got to know, oh my goodness, I'm on YouTube and people, they don't know the purpose. Uh, it, it's, 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 we're in the dark. We're in the, we came in here DOA. We're in the dark. We were blind, you know, not knowing the purpose. Uh, so it, it is, we are very grateful and thankful. And let me, and, you know, Moses must have been, you know, humbled himself, you know, just to uh, be spoken to by the creator and having, having seen, man, as a matter of fact, having seen him in the, in, in, in the vision, okay? That, you know, all the prophets that did so must have been in, in awe you know, all struck, but knew that they had to, uh, that there was nothing else. They knew that, that it was nothing else and nobody else. Um, I mean, even even as Solomon turned in his old years, you know, by his wives and, well, Solomon had, Yahweh spoke to him so many times, you know, so you don't think he's going to deny, <laughs> actually deny Yahweh, you know, uh, as he preached to the Catholic, but let me get um about this pattern here. Uh, we have uh, in the school first get uh first get Exodus twenty four. Uh, once you get the pattern uh, Tabernacle Scriptures, Exodus twenty fourth chapter. You know, starting at eight, I believe it is in the twenty fifth chapter. Um, and then also. First Chronicles, uh, Hebrews eight and five, because even the Messiah in our scripture lesson refers back to the scriptures. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, and what do we find in the scriptures? This tabernacle pattern running all through throughout uh, the ages and dispensations. Paul reaching back way hundreds of years back to uh you know, correlate. Wow. I mean, this is something else. Come to find out that our, our body, our, our, the, we're walking, we're walking witnesses. Okay. We're walking witnesses just as they had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. And, you know, it's, uh, just behooves us to stick to it. And because there's uh, so many principles laid down therein, so let's get uh, let's get Exodus uh, twenty fourth chapter. Exodus five and eight, and let him make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. Even so shall you make it. 40th verse, and look that thou make them after their pattern that was shown to thee in the mount. That's right. Uh, this, pa this pattern, which Yahweh himself admonished, you know, is, you know, Yahweh himself would admonish. Don't do anything different with it. Uh, make it exactly like I showed you. Uh, also get uh, the 24th chapter also. Yeah, in Exodus, but but this uh this pattern that was given to Moses <clears throat> is threefold. You know, it was a court roundabout, holy place, and a most holy place. And uh, 
was shocked to find out that everything conforms to the pattern. <laughs> uh, you know, as, as various vessels have said, you know, we knew we knew things came in threes, and then um, you know, we uh, uh, some of you know us who grew up with uh, back with Sesame Street and uh, those. TV shows back there, we remember uh, the three, the three song man and a woman had a little baby, three, yes, <laughs> three in a family is a magic number. <laughs> wow, you know, we, we didn't know um, before we came in to, into the school how important that, that really was. But it's it's pointing up to the threefold unity <laughs> of Yahweh himself, okay? And it's debunking at the same time Trinitarian concept, and then you know, along with it, doesn't make sense if you don't have the true names, <laughs> you know. So, we've got uh, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, this, this spirit taking on shape and form, okay, right within itself, so that it can be seen in visions and revelation. Note that spirit is the substance, essence of formless, formless, and you can't perceive of it if this uh, transmutation doesn't happen. That, but he's going to, he's doing this so that he can present himself to us in visions, in revelation, divine visions, revelation, and that he might walk around on the earth plane and save or be salvation to his creatures. Okay, so you got Yahweh in pure spirit and taking on shape and form, known as Elohim, and then coming down into a lesser state, even more known as in the flesh, known as Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, so threefold, but the same spirit. Uh, this is why he says, I am I am my father, I want. Uh, if you've seen me, if you've seen the father. And, and so on. I'm the bread to come down from heaven, it, it, but threefold, but yet one. Not a trinity, not a trinity, not three separate. I asked somebody to explain this to me some years ago, a Christian, and they said, "Well, we, you know, we just don't. We can't, I can't explain that. We don't know, uh, and that's not good because, you know, there are those things that can be known of Yahweh, okay, and it's manifested." <laughs> In them, you're made up threefold because Yahweh showed it unto them. Mm -hmm. You know, your body is what head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity. That that tabernacle was threefold court round about holy place, most holy place. There was a high a high priest who had to officiate there. Okay, and oh, it's just so much. But um, uh, okay, get the next scripture. This is Exodus 24, 8, um, eight of 24 and 9. Mm -hmm. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, the 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a cave full of the sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid down his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and David the three. Right, right. The body of heaven in his clear list. Not, not the body of heaven. He was black. Mm -hmm. Or he was white. You know, right. we can lay all those concepts to rest. Because, uh, again, he's a source and substance, limits and bounds of everything. <laughs> And took on shape and form, showed itself to Moses. He, what he showed him, he had hands and feet, uh, and he was able to get out uh, understanding, you know. And that's what he was. Uh, that's what Moses was given. Um, let Let's get now. Oh, wow, it's, okay, so I want you to get. Let's get Hebrews 8 and 5 and see that Paul refers back to that. And then also after that, I want you to get Genesis 6, I think it's 16. 
Okay. And then I want you to get uh, Genesis 1, uh, I think it's 26 and 27. So we didn't make this up. But it's been read throughout for so long since this Bible has been in print, you know. But we didn't understand it. You know, I used to, that that man is made an image. I, I was, okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I don't know about couldn't mm -hmm. prove it, you know, especially not by the scriptures. And he, and he said, yeah, so get the, yeah, go ahead and get first chronicle because we're saying everything was made in the likeness and image of Yahweh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it would, this, this, this threefold tabernacle here <clears throat> was taken up into Canaan land, but it was assimilated as it, it was weather beaten. And the vessels are assimilated into Solomon's temple. And then Solomon's temple is a more greater and grander uh, house, you know, or temple of Yahweh. And uh, that's pointing to the natural and the spiritual, but yet it's still going to be threefold. So yeah, you can get that. This is from Chronicles 28. He told me David, Yahweh made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of his hand. That's right. Here we go with Wait a minute, did he say something about understanding? Mm -hmm. Made me understand? Yes. Okay. Um, I think they did. Yeah, we made me understand in writing by his giving upon me, even all the works of his pattern. All right. Even he referring back to a pattern, even all the works of this pattern. And he made him the, it was Yahweh that gave him the understanding. Okay. Um, and the knowledge, <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot. And then, of course, David couldn't build it, but Solomon did. So that you got the uh, father passing it on to his son. To uh, and that's a that's a spiritual, <clears throat> you know, that's uh, something reflecting in the spirit. But and then Solomon built that temple. Now that temple was threefold. A porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. Okay, and that or you know Yahweh he dwells. He that's where he was. He said he would dwell. I want you to get as far as this tabernacle uh, built in the wilderness. Your tabernacle and your inner man. Okay, because you do have an inner man. With your tabernacle, you got this court. Your court roundabout, which is that ab abdominum. Um, section, and then you got your uh, <clears throat> chest cavity, and you then you have your head cavity. Okay, you got your abdomen and your chest separated by a diaphragm, chest and head separated by this neck region. <clears throat> well, threefold pattern given to Moses, court round about holy place, most holy place, court round about, and holy places. Has a division also. This door or this first veil. The next two compartments are divided by this second veil, of course. And as the high priest, you know, function throughout this tabernacle daily, this he could only go into this most holy place one time a year. All right. Of course, he had to be anointed to do, to do so to officiate here, but only one time a year. And that is to uh, what? To see that phenomenal light or that, or that flashing of the Shekinah. Now get exit, uh, get Leviticus 16 and 2. And then after, and after that, I want you to get, uh, you can go to Noah and the rest of them. Because Yahweh said he's going to dwell there. He's going to appear <laughs> If he could, well, if he's going to dwell or appear here, he'll do the same here, you know, in type and shadow, and he'll do the same in that inner man, okay? Mm -hmm. Type and shadow. And you know what? <clears throat> he did the same with Israel, okay? As they got their what? Inheritance here, 
Okay, he led them out of this plague-stricken darkness of Egypt or Babylon, which we know we are living in Babylon today. Okay, but we are uh, we're living in it, but we're not part of it. We're not uh, we're not beholden to these idols that are in Babylon. Okay, mm -hmm. because there's plenty of idols <laughs> down here in Egypt. Okay. And they worship and worship, and uh, Pharaoh was one of them. And uh, and it, but he always devastated this land. Okay, he devastated it. And look, come to find out, it's the threefold migratory trek: <laughs> wilderness, Egypt, uh, Egypt, Egypt, wilderness, and Canaan land. Egypt and wilderness separated by what? It has to be a separation. The Red Sea, okay? Wilderness and Canaan land, land separated by the River Jordan. Who knew Who knew that the River Jordan parted miraculously just like a, it was like a door opening up? Just, you know, who knew? I sure didn't. Heck, I didn't even know that Moses had made three trips into the mountain. Into the mountain. But go ahead. Uh, what else is there? Okay, you can get, uh, you know what? I want you to get, uh, before you get Hebrew, well, you, yeah, go ahead, get Hebrews. This is Hebrews 8 and 5. Matter of fact, starting at 8 and 1, because we'll cover some of this. We get with this pattern that was, which Paul knew so much about. Okay, he was fluent. You know how they say he was fluent in, in, in many languages or more than one? Well, he was fluent in this language also. He knew all about it. Okay, but then. Of course, Paul was going to be on the road to Damascus. He was going to be uh, converted, you may say. And he's going to learn another language. That's a spiritual language. You know, a spiritual language. So he, he so he definitely was fl as fluid <laughs> in both languages. And he talked, and he went and, you know, was um, taught all over Rome set up many churches but you can get that scripture this is hebrews 81 now the things which we have spoken this is the sum we have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty and the heavens wait okay Just pause right there and get leviticus 16 and 2 because again we're talking about a pattern here and um Wow, it all came, it all came from the mind of Yahweh. Elohim carried it out. And this one here, or Elohim in the flesh, he carried out this purpose <clears throat> or finished what well, his work that was instituted to the children of Israel and the, Jew, the Jews and Jews only. And we're talking about this law. He carried out or fulfilled it and brought it to an end so that they come from out, out from under so something that they couldn't keep but it was what put forth to make sin more exceedingly sinful or a type and a shadow of things to come the truth mm -hmm. go ahead. this is the really good 16 and 2 I'm holding in the bible mm -hmm. and Yahweh said uh, matter of fact started 16 and 1 16 and 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron which they offered before Yahweh and died. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. That's right. You, I will appear, you know, and, and the cloud, oh, okay. The cloud will. How about your your holy place? Do you have a cloud there? You sure do. Crinkle up red and white matter, okay? Which is uh, which is where your law resides, your pituitary gland. Three, three and seven hormones on one on each side. I mean, on each side, either side, where you had this law <laughs> in this Ten Commandment law placed in this Ark of the Covenant. That, wow, you had this. These two archangels, you know, pointing, uh, facing each other, 
your left, showing forth your left and right hemisphere of your brain. It's, it really is, it, man, this is crazy, but true. <laughs> he, uh, and he said he would appear, well, you got this flash of the Shekinah that we talked about, that phenomenal light, and you got your pineal gland, see, which uh, is light sensitive. You know, this stuff you can't make up, okay? Just can't make it up now. What's the next uh, scripture? Yeah, yeah. Keep on. Hebrews 8 and 2. A minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not named. Mm -hmm. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Right, right. Gifts and sacrifices. Gifts and sacrifices, that's what they had to bring when they, when they, anytime he sang, which was all day, daily, every day, mm -hmm. he was 24 hours all just about seven days a week. He was daily doing this. And they were daily offering up sacrifices and for their sins and, and sins, you know, transferred from them to the, to the animal, the innocent animal, and that an animal died. But uh, all these things pointing to, the true high priest or the truth and the true sacrifice. Okay, keep reading. For if he were on earth, he should not have a, a he should not be a priest. Seeing this, there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern, show to thee in the mouth. Right, Paul is preaching from the pattern, <laughs> the, the same pattern in Moses, uh, that was given to Moses, okay? The same pattern, before you, I want you to keep reading there, but I, I want you to get, uh, did you get, did we get Genesis? Let's get Genesis. Because the world had waxed wicked, okay? And the thoughts of mankind were evil continuously, which is what we see today. Okay. You, you know, I thought I grew up on the South Side <laughs> and saw some stuff. No, the, the thing has gotten worse and worse. People hopping out of cars with uh, machine guns. You may, you know, uh, people blowing up. This is worldwide now. This is, you got people blowing up, uh, trying to uh, commit genocide. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, all kind of stuff going on, you know. The de you know, these demons are running rampant. <laughs> you know, they, they really are, and uh, it's just a state and condition of spiritually of mankind psychologically. You know, and it's bad, but it's supposed to happen. We know, come down here and we find out it's supposed to happen. So we are, <laughs> we are on the right track. So. So go ahead. This is Genesis 6 and uh, 16. A skylight shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. Wow. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, before I came in this class, I knew some about the ark. I knew of the ark, the ark story, but I didn't know nothing about a, 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 a skylight, one door, and three levels. I come on, I didn't know that. And then, and to correlate it, to have someone correlate it to say, hey, it's threefold, and that it's the ark of safety. Uh, you know, still blows our minds today and then and and who told who to build that ark Yahweh told Mo, uh, Noah to build it he came to him in a vision and revelation <laughs> you know he appeared to him and told him what to do so uh you know no wonder it fits because it's Yahweh you know, he, he's doing it mm -hmm. uh now uh you can go back to yeah. This is Hebrews 8 and 6. 
But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Right. You know what? Just as the high priest, you know, had to make a round trip on the Day of Atonement, you know, uh, <laughs> true for a high priest, he makes a round trip also. Mm -hmm. uh, because he underwent a death, burial, and resurrection down here in the flesh, okay? Or at least a death and burial. <laughs> and then he resurrected, you know, tarried for 40 days. And then ascend it, and then 10 days later, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Well, he went through a what? A death, a burial, a resurrection, and an ascension. Or, as we say, blood, water, spirit, 40, you know, and perfection. Seven is perfection. That's the seventh, that's the seventh step in your tabernacle pattern. Where you have the gate being the first step, you got the uh, altar of sin sacrifice being the second step. You got the labor being the third step. Fourth step is the door or that first veil. Fifth step is the entire holy place. Sixth step, the, the, the uh, second veil. And the seventh step being the most holy place. Okay, so you got, and then also you got here, blood. They had to offer up sacrifices, folks, just as you have to offer up a sacrifice in your in your court roundabout or your abdomen. Okay, they had to offer up a sacrifice. Okay, so you had you got the principle of blood, water. He's a, he's anointed here. Okay, spirit and then fourth step. So that's what we're you know we're not getting away from that. And uh, we're urging others to uh, come join in this teaching. You know, it's a universal uh, brotherhood of in humanity in Yahshua Messiah. So not black, not white, not the yellow man, not the red man. It's the, clear, it's the body of heaven and it's clearness. And he's going to pour out his understanding and give you uh, light. <laughs> Bread or substance and intercession, you know. Uh, that's it's simple, but it's 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 shown, you know, in this the most popular book on the, on the earth, just about. And then, of course, again, we couldn't lose the seals, and he had to do that, and he sure and he sure did, and on the day of Pentecost, and as they received the Holy Spirit, but. Again, when else am I holding? Yeah, go ahead, get you Genesis one twenty six, and I think somewhere in Thessalonians six, uh, second chapter, maybe five and twenty or something like that. <clears throat> I just want body, soul, and spirit. That, that one. But yeah, go ahead and get the uh, Genesis. It was Genesis one twenty six, and Elohim said, Let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. after our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that it that creeps upon the earth. And there, that's, that's, yeah, that's good right there. That's good right there. And then so. So you got man-made body, soul, and spirit, or pneuma soma psyche. Okay, uh, you got what? <clears throat> you got um, uh, you got gas, liquid, and solid on this earth plane everywhere. Mm -hmm. You got the electron. Or the uh, atom being proton, neutron, electron. Okay, you got the cell. Uh, these are the smallest building blocks of uh, matter and of uh, and of the universe itself. 
And so you got the cell being a nucleus, nucleolus, a cell body. Okay, so, or oh, cell body, nucleus, and nucleolus. So threefold, yet one, all right? Testifying to your creator. <laughs> we can't do anything with that. And, and why is it that way? It's because he created it all, okay? Mm -hmm. That, that, you know, again, it's his story. He created it all like that. So it had to be uh, in his likeness and in, in his image. And he said, what? He said, let us, <laughs> let us, you know, people, we, you know, get, used to get stumped over that when we were in class. People still get stumped over it and make fun of it. But no, let us, uh, it was, Formed in the mind of Yahweh and Elohim carried it out, carried it out, <laughs> moving into this shape and form. Okay. And then uh, and also again, Yahshua Messiah came in and carried out first he instituted this law, and then 1500 years later, he fulfilled it and brought it to an end, took it out of the way because it was very laborious to the children of Israel. To the children of Israel only. Okay. Not meaning that, and again, we said three and a half years of his in his ministry, he he taught them, you know, and said that, hey, I'm going to uh go through this death, burial, and resurrection, you know, but I'm gonna come back as the comforter. And he surely did that. But he um, again, he opened up their understanding on I want you to get uh, Luke uh, 24 uh, chapter and go through that 27, you know, uh, 25 through 27, I think it is again, 44. Yeah, because uh, he, he, he was, he, he taught that he had came in to fulfill and told him in many places in the, in the, in the uh, Bible there that uh, is so, in the so-called gospels. It, it, he, he told him he came in to fulfill, and then he showed he had he's gonna to have to point it the witnesses out in the scriptures, <laughs> you know, back with the, as he showed it to all the prophets how that those things testify to him. Okay, so and so he walking around, he's a walking tabernacle of witness, walking around and being showing them the witnesses that spoke of him. Okay. <laughs> You know, that's incredible. That's incredible, really. So uh, let's get that. This is um, Luke 24 and 27. You want to start? 20, uh, start at 25, 16. Okay, this is Luke 24 and 25. Then he sent out to them, O fools and slow hearts, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Right. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered? Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. It, and then for, for that, that's why we go back to Moses, because this this lamb that they slaughtered in, in Exodus, these four points of blood. On the houses of the children of Israel, that points to the true lamb. <laughs> That's why he has these four points of blood here, and and, and, and and feet. Okay, and that's why they identify him, uh, John one twenty nine, as the Lamb of Yahweh. Okay, <laughs> who taketh away the sins of the world, and he surely did take away the sins of the world, and he took away the sins of Israel also. But you what? But now you have to believe. You have to believe on him that he was the one, because they say he he was not the one. You know, uh, a lot of people out there, and 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 these are Jews that he went, that is they claim to, you know, to be the children of Abraham and this and that. But they don't believe he came. They don't believe he was the one. They, and that means you're without a savior. That's you know that's a bad predicament if because mm -hmm. if he is the savior which he proved he is then you didn't you know you still you you're still in darkness or stuck in darkness mm -hmm. with no way out 
if you reject the truth, then you got no way out. Or well, it's called a blind leading the, leading the blind because if you reject the truth, say I'm the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. If you reject that, then there's nothing else. It's almost like you was uh, in a cave, you know, pitch black, and you felt around, and the door was right here. You was, but you, but you couldn't, you didn't know it, you didn't recognize it. So then you went, you wandered on somewhere else, and there you died in the cave. You know, so it's, it's so it's not good because he is the way, the truth, and light. As a matter of fact, if you're ever in a cave and you see <laughs> some light, or you see, or you feel air coming through, you need to go. You need to gravitate toward that, toward that source. You know, because uh, that's you're going to be your way out. Um, what a twenty four first, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened ye their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Right, right, right. Yeah, keep reading a little bit more. So I think it's more on it. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. That's right. You know, and did you know that this was a you say repentance and the remission of sins? Did you did you know that this was the laws, sin and death? I mean, that's all it was. Death, <laughs> you sin. Something died. You saying something died. You, you saying you might even die, you know, under that law. But he tell you, but he's taking it out of the way and nailing it to his cross. Okay. And ushering it and us into the reality, you see, that he that we might be under spirit law. Okay, that we might be led and guided by the spirit. You know, so it or we might uh that comfort of I want you to get, hold on, what am I holding? Yeah, get that and then get uh, John 14 and uh, get the comforter. Because you need, you need comfort down here. You know, everybody needs comfort. Who, does, who doesn't want it? Don't let anybody fool you. We all need comfort, and we definitely need comfort. When, you know, when you are, um, when you when you are uh, at this in this ease, I don't care what it is, uh, by the weather, by uh, this body going down, you know, you need comfort. <laughs> you know, and he's the only one that can do it, and he showed that he can do it when he uh, he uh, healed all manner of diseases, and and he cast out spirits, evil spirits. So of course they must be a disease, but they are disease of the uh, this inner man. You got a, you got a, you got an outer man <laughs> and an inner man. You know, show for by their bone bone structure, which tarries on the earth after you after this flesh goes to the ground and decomposes. You know, matter of fact, you know the flesh starts to decompose even before it hits the ground, or well, even before you bury. It starts to decompose and smell, and uh, you know, it's it's like right away. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it starts, man. When you start breathing, it starts. <laughs> it is, it's, it's no joke. But there's an inner man, you know, tip, you know, typified by this bony structure, okay, and that goes on after, you know. Then you can get into the prophecy, the dry bone, and that kind of thing. But uh. But all these things are showed by Yahweh Elohim. And, and it's a great vision. So what else is? First Thessalonians 5 and 23. And the very Elohim of peace sanctify you holy, so that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. That's right. That's right. Um, <clears throat> And, and 
but you know it's uh it's, it's a it's a beautiful thing but uh I mean, he showed in Moses' vision. And you know what? As he appeared to Moses on top of Mount Sinai, he appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos and confirms his, 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 the, the, the vision. Okay. And then as Moses saw him, John saw him also. This, uh, where is it? Revela is it Revelations? One and twelve or something. Oh, I want you to get Revelation, the first chapter, I believe. Um, because he described himself the most, and then then Dr. Henley Clifford Kenley, he's shown the same thing, but encompasses both with a panoramic vision, you know, of, of this thing. And it, it, you know, it's just crazy how, how that happened, but we're so happy though. Oh, that, now that's true comfort. That's true comfort because I was on um, just a sidebar. I was on. I'm always on YouTube. You know the, the the comments. You know about certain things. But you know people are in darkness. They need some help. And uh, you know when they, if, you know if ever you can, you know you offer a good word. You know you know it's, it's, it's Yahweh's word, so it's Joshua. Uh, but it, the, the true. The names, you know, they truly are important. They truly are important. And you this teaching um, can really be um, hammered home using the true names. And, and, and it's only one name that can be saved. <laughs> so as Paul said that all, you know, it's only one name you can be saved in. And you're breathing that name. Come on, folks. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's too many witnesses. Too many witnesses, and it's too late to deny... Uh, the one who is responsible for you walking around on this earth. So it kind of behooves us to get the understanding uh, and, and get the witnesses straight. You know, he, 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 he's not going to leave you in the dark. Uh, Revelations 1 and 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and a, good, a third about a hat with a golden girdle, and the head and his ears were black like wool. Right, right, right. That don't mean, you know, remember back in the day I had a bushy afro, afro. <laughs> it was woolly. That don't mean he was a black man. Right. Okay. Right. He, you know, he, he should refer him back to this. This, this pattern here, hmm? you know, white or clear is, you know, it, it has nothing to, to do with uh, race. Right. Okay. These are these are principles we're talking about. And, you know, lamb has wool too. But uh, keep going. His ears and his hairs, his hand and his ears were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. That's right. That's right. His eyes were a flame of fire. You know, Yahweh is a consuming fire. If you talk about that flashing of the Shekinah, or what you know, where he, the people appear, that's a phenomenal light. You know, you, you got you had light. You know, this fire. You know, you got light down here in the court around about this fire that never went out. You light a fire at night if it's pitch black, and you'll and you'll be okay. Uh, and then you had a, this. John talked about this seven, this cold, this candlestick, and, the, and he was in the midst. Let's testify in the the Messiah also. He came in the, in the midst of the week or 4,000th year. Okay. And uh, and seven is perfection. You got a phenomenal light here also. And uh, we and he and he is the true light of the world. He said that in John, also the uh, first chapter, of John. But but keep reading where you are. And was it, was it, did we finish that? Oh, okay, yeah, get you. His feet was like unto fine grass as if it burned in his furnace, and his voice was the sound of many water. Right, 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 right. We, we, the vessel down here with brass, okay, you got water. And so, you know, he, he's not leaving any, any stone unturned. Right. If you can get uh, John, um, either the, 
Well, it's in the 10th chapter, I believe, too. And it's in the first chapter also. The light. He's a light that's lighted. Yeah. Either one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because, uh, uh, it, you know, we want that light or day star in us. It's rising in us. In our, yeah. Yeah. He was the door. Well, go back to uh, your ark. The Noah's Ark, he's the one skylight, you know, and and he's the door. He play, he, he play. This is John um, 8 and 12. Yeah. John 8 and 12. Then spake Yahshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Yeah. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, oh, wow. but shall have the light of life. Okay, he that followed me shall not walk in darkness. That holds true to the today. We know that was written so far, you know, back then. But the words, the the words of, of life are still being spoken. You know, these these are the words he we showed you. These are the same words that he was teaching. The same words Paul was teaching. You know, and that's what we want to stick with, and uh, to to get our lights turned on, to never go out. You know, he's. He's the eternal light, like, you know. He's the one that, well, he's the one that caused it all. Again, first the first cause of all creation, you know. She, he, this is the one who said, "Let there be light," and then it's, uh, and and, and he's the, and then Moses in Moses' vision, he saw this this great light here, also placed in his in his, you know, on the fourth day, you know, typifying the Messiah again, a, you know, this, this four thousand year. You know, he came in. Uh, so, you know, with that, with those, you know, with those few words, I'm gonna say hallelujah. Hope somebody got some. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Baron Taylor. For our second speaker for this afternoon's session, we would like to call on Dr. Rose Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, if it be the will of Yahshua just to use me as a vessel to share anything, um, I'll praise and honor go on to Yahshua the Messiah. Um, I did enjoy the words of the remarks of the first vessel and thankful to Yahshua for having another opportunity to come to class. And it, it, it is indeed by his grace and mercy because nothing is promised to us and um, you know, um, it behooves us to try to make it while we yet have opportunity. And so the first speaker um, was speaking about um, how um, Yahshua the Messiah is the the true pattern and the witnesses of Yahweh, and knowing that uh, he's our comforter, or he is the only way out. So maybe if we can get John 14 and 26, because Yahshua the Messiah who the world, and he went over the names, it's important to know the name, which is the name is Yahshua instead of uh, Jesus Christ and Lord and God, our false uh, uh, these are titles um, that the creator's name is Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And it is important to know the name or the true name of our creator. And we always say, and that's just in the natural, if you were going to, on a 
to get to know someone, introduce yourself to someone, the first thing you want to know is their name. And the name is important. And that uh, Yahshua the Messiah is the comforter. Um, so let's get John 14, 26. John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. If you could pause right there, it says, but the comforter, and we're pointing here, but we understand that Yahshua the Messiah is no longer dead uh, on the cross, that he is risen and he did resurrect in AD 33 and a half. He poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit on the Jews first, and he also poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit on a Gentile some seven years later. But it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, See, and Yahshua the Messiah, um, as it was said, that Yahweh came all the way down. He took on this uh, super incorporeal shape and form of a man that can be seen in visions and accompanied by divine revelation. And Yahweh Elohim also came down into a lesser state and walked around in the earth as Yahshua the Messiah to be salvation on those who would believe in him. So it says the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father shall send in his name, shall teach you all things. So we understand coming down here that the true teacher or the true preacher is Yahshua the Messiah. And that we of our own selves are, are mere vessels, but it truly takes the Holy Spirit or the Comforter to teach us who he is and how he's operating and give us a reveal understanding. We can't study up on it. Uh, we do study because the scripture said study to, self, to show that self prove unto Yahweh. Uh, work man and not be ashamed, but we do know that we have to have a revelation by Yahshua the Messiah. And so it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send him his name, and this is one spirit, not another. This is not a Trinitarian concept. We have Lord one, God another, and Jesus Christ the third so-called making up the Holy Trinity, but one spirit, see, one Yahweh, having a power to take on shape and form of man is Yahweh Elohim. And this is the word or son and how the scriptures identify, said the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, when you talk about the prophets and patriarchs down through the ages and dispensation, well, this is Yahweh Elohim who appeared unto man and gave them things to do, write this or do that. And that this self-same spirit, pre proving that he is a unity, not a trinity, as taught by many in the religious world, this self-same spirit came down and walked around in the flesh as Joshua the Messiah. He was crucified, according to the scriptures, buried and resurrected the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay, so we can just finish that. Verse, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So it says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And there are many things in the world that can trouble mankind, but we know we have to rely on Yahshua the Messiah. And so one of the other things we uh, learned down here in the school that our creator is a unity. So I just want to get Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Zechariah 14 and 9, and um, 1 John 5 and 7. So th there is a uh, the unity, and, and it talks about in Romans 1, 19 and 20, because that which may be known of Yahweh, what we learn down here in this school, we can learn something about our creator whose spirit. And we understand, I didn't know what spirit was. I thought God was up above the clouds. And when I thought about God, I would look up thinking that's what God was. But see, we learned that Yahweh, our creator, is spirit. He doesn't possess these attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. He doesn't possess it. That's what he is. Yahweh is spirit. 
Uh, he is intelligence. He is knowledge. He is wisdom. He is love. He is justice. He is beauty. He is foundation. He is power and he is strength. So that's one of the other things we learn of coming down here in the school that Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and we're coming down here to learn how to worship our creator in spirit and in truth see and he is the teacher uh, that this room or this building and we also learn that our creator doesn't dwell in temples made with hands so that our creator can re reside right within our tabernacle. Um, and I know that, and I was just on a sidebar uh, sharing with my husband, that this is the day, the once a year, that my mother would take us to church <laughs> on so-called Easter. Um, and so that they, they would be making a lot of money today um, with the folks therein. But we learn come down here at this school that, um, see, Yahweh doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. It says that in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. So that not only do they have a large group of folks there, mm -hmm. they're also making money and passing a plate to get extra funds on days like today. Mm -hmm. But the true Passover is Joshua the Messiah thing. And that um, this is all a part of Mystery Babylon. Uh, to deceive mankind, ultimately, you'll lose your soul trying to work upon salvation. See, baptism, water baptism, I mean, ceremonies, sacrifices, Passovers, Ten Commandment Law, see, all those things were done away with and nailed to the cross. See, when Yahshua and the Messiah came, he fulfilled the law. But not only what, what the devil has done, he has carried these things over after Pentecost and got mankind under these works of salvation that were, one, never given to us as Gentiles to do, us as Gentiles. And then two, after Pentecost, see, Yahshua the Messiah, he nailed those things to the cross. He fulfilled those things and he brought it to an end. See, and after his death, burial, and resurrection, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, these things over here is no longer valid. Over here on this side of the cross, after Yahshua, see, resurrected and poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit, now we can worship the Father in spirit and in truth and not with our hands. First, we were never given these things to do in the first place. And the Hebrew Israelites, they couldn't keep the law because the law was outside of them, see, and they needed a law to be placed within them the same way we need the Holy Spirit to be placed within us. Now we can worship him in spirit and in truth when that occurs. So let's get um, that scripture there. This is Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one Elohim. So it says, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one one Elohim or unity. And, and then the other thing with, you know, when we came down here to this school, we learned you don't just get, re you, wrote, you don't read around in the Bible. You don't pick it up and think that's what's talking to me. We learn what the scriptures are, the law and the prophets. Well, what's the law? The first five books in the Bible, the prophets is Joshua through Malachi. That is the law and the prophets given by thus saith Yahweh Elohim. And when he he appeared unto the various patriarchs and prophets down through the ages and dispensations, told them, write this and do that. So he said, hear, O Israel. And see, that's another clue um, that they really don't explain to us when we're going to churches. They didn't say, hear, O everybody. He said, hear, O Israel, which is another witness that Yahweh Elohim chose to select group of people out, brought them out of Egypt and gave them 613 laws and ordinances, some of which are identified here, Passover being one of them. See, so it wasn't given to Gentiles. And these are the things that they don't explain to us and teach us as we're out here in these churches going around trying to find our creator. They got us opening up somebody else's mail to do in the law that wasn't given to us to do 
that is also no longer valid in this age. Well, you know, what do we mean by age? Well, we learned down here that there's seven ages and seven dispensations, but we have three ages which are in time, three ages and dispensations which are in time. See, we have this antediluvian age, which began with the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the garden down to the flood. And then Yahweh Elohim closed out this age. He told Noah to build an ark because the end of all flesh has come before him. See, and Noah and his family resurrected over here into the post-diluvian age. Now, this is the second age in time. And this is the age where that old covenant, the old law, 613 laws and ordinances were given to the Jews only. See, Yahshua the Messiah was born, it says, made of a woman, made under the law, which, which is why Yahshua kept the law. He fulfilled it, moved it out of the way, nailed it to his cross. And see, he poured out after his death, burial, and resurrection, he changed the age. This is the age in which we reside, which is the third age in time. It's the fourth age, and it's the present kingdom age. And he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit, as said before, to Jews only, seven years later unto the Gentiles. And we'll end with the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. And these are the things we learned coming down here to this school. So when Yahshua is speaking, he's over here, where? Under the law. So it's valid for him, you know, to get water baptized and keep the Passover. So when he, we learn coming down here, when he hung on the cross and he talked about fulfilling the law and the prophets, those things point to and testify of me. And when he hung on the cross, he said he's finished. He's talking over here. Here he's finished completing the law and prophecy and it's nailed to the cross. So he ushered in a new and better way on this side. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works. Okay, so let's get that. Okay. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. In that day, Yahweh will prove to be a unity and with one name. And so he'll prove to be a unity. So one of the things that is important to ask these ministers, well, let's get first John five and seven. Why does the creator keep talking about a unity? Because Trinity is not in the Bible. And that's an important question. They have to, they should be trying to explain to us why they are trying to convince us of a Trinitarian concept when it talks about it in the law, it's talking about it in the prophets, and then first John five and seven. Is first John five and seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. See, there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, or the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. That's another unity, not a trinity. See, and then Yahweh said he's the natural things and talked about in Romans 1, 19 and 20, because that which may be known of Yahweh. So that means God ain't dead and left us to our own devices and we're just groping in darkness. He said, because that which may be known, we can know something. Yahweh has it. He's justice himself. So he's not a failing Elohim. He's going to condemn you to the lake of fire without giving you a way to know something about him. So it says that which may be known, we can know something about our creator. It's clearly seen, I'm paraphrasing, being understood by the things that are made. So it takes the natural to understand the spiritual. So you have this unity being talked about, not a trinity. That's part of the a false erroneous doctrine in the world. See, when you look at um, water, which is H2O, proving that he's a trinity, proving that the natural points to the spiritual. You have gas, liquid, and solid. It still remains H2O. 
See, it just changes state from a gaseous state, condense it, liquid state, and even further, you freeze it as ice. These are the witnesses of Yahweh that he's laid down, the natural point to the spiritual. It has nothing to do with our race, nothing to do with our political affiliation, that these things are often arrayed according to a pattern. It's pointed to and testifying of the invisible spiritual Yahweh, who's threefold, yet one. So you have an atom being a proton, neutron electron, a cell being a nucleolus, a nucleus, a cell body, where you have time, bitches, past, present, and future. See, all these things are pointing to their witnesses, and it talks about the one um, man, uh-oh, the one man, he is made body, soul, and spirit, yet one man, a head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity, and it says, what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, see? So when we receive Yahshua the Messiah, now our body can be the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we're pointing to this physical tabernacle, the body tabernacle. Moses was told, you build this sanctuary, this tabernacle, just like you saw in the mount. And it's a, a most holy place, holy place court round, about seven steps, but nine vessels therein because it's a type and shadow of the true tabernacle being Yahweh Elohim himself. Okay, so what do we have there? Anything else? If, we also had First John 5 and 7. Okay, uh, we, okay. we did that. That's good for a three to bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, we learn that Yahshua and Messiah is a true Passover. He's our sacrifice. So I want to go back to Exodus. Now, um, uh, Moses was drawn out by Yahweh Elohim. He was raised in Egypt. I want to get Exodus 12 and 1. Uh, just a little bit about the Passover meal. Then I want to get, uh, I want to also get Isaiah to talk about Yahshua being the lamb. I also want to get um, uh, John 5, uh John 1 and 29 and then Matthew 26 and 26. So we want to talk about how the children of Israel see so Moses was raised in Egypt. He killed a man. See, he, he knew it would be known, and he fled out here in the wilderness. And while Moses was out here tending to the flock, he's uh, Mary Jephro Ruel's daughter. He beholds a vision in a bush that appeared to burn, but the bush was not consumed. See, and Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. Now, this is Exodus, the third chapter. It is right here that Yahweh Elohim tells Moses, to come back down into Egypt to deliver his son out of Egypt. He also reveals the true name unto Moses. He said that he's the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And he said, moreover, his name was Yahweh Elohim. So there's power in the name. See, and they, they're deceiving folks by not letting them know the true name, that that's a false erroneous doctrine. See, and there's power in the name. And the devil, he's always up to some tricks. He's always want to lie and fool you, try to get you. Even when the disciples were going around just to digress with preaching in the name of Yahshua, they threatened them. They said, didn't we straightly tell you, don't you preach in that name no more? And there was a Holy Spirit through the apostles that were uh, healing, he said, look, this is the one you put on a cross. He the one that did the job. It's just them as vessels. See, So digressing back. So he tells Moses, go back down. He said, now look, Pharaoh is not going to let you go, but by a mighty hand that he will eventually let you go. And he would eventually pour out 10 devastating plagues of Egypt. So, you know, he would pour out one, they would, you know, okay, I'll let him go, then he'll change his mind, and then go back to evilly entreating the children of Israel. So he did that for a while, and then Yahweh Elohim has told Moses, he said, look, after that tenth and devastating last plague, it's going to happen. He's going to let you go. So Moses goes back down to deliver the words of Yahweh and the name, and see what Moses is saying down here is what thus saith Yahweh Elohim had told him what to say. So let's get Exodus 12 and 1. We'll read around in that a little bit. I want to pick up the just the paths over there. 
So this is the institution. Now, remember, we said we came down here and we learned that the Yahshua, the Messiah, who the world, world cross erroneously called Jesus Christ, um, that he said, Matthew 5, 17, when he walked around, he said, think not, I come to destroy the law and the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And this being a school we're taught, we have to look these things up. Don't just open it up. Think it's about me. Figure, okay, he's talking about getting baptized. I'm going to do it too. It was good for Jesus. It's good for me too. No. See, Yahshua and the Messiah was born under the Hebrew lineage. See, under the law, which that was valid to do. Not to us as Gentiles. And, and matter of fact, it's done away with. So uh, we have to go, you know, it takes us coming and keep coming back. And Yahshua continues to open up the scriptures for us. Okay. Exodus 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man in the land. He says, Excuse me, speak unto all the congregation of Israel. We're going to say that again because he said he didn't speak to everybody to take out a lamb. He said, speak unto Israel. See, and this is the, they got folks trying to eat the Holy Eucharist, Passover, and all that. He says, speak ye unto the congregation of Israel. See, continue on. They shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. Okay, so they had to take a lamb, a lamb for a house. So we're looking at the Romans 1, 19 and 20. This is the institution of the Passover. But spiritually so now, we have to take a lamb for our spiritual house. Yeah. See, the Passover isn't physical anymore. It's spiritual. Say, every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb and it talks about the ear tribe words as a mouth tastes meat and we're eating the true words or the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah we're not trying to keep the natural Passover see that's been done away with Yahshua see but the true Passover is Yahshua the Messiah eating of his words and his lamb had to be a male lamb without a spot or blemish so if we could pause right there I want to get Isaiah 53 and 7 if you could start up a little bit around 53 maybe read down just a little bit then jump down and then John 1 and 29 because it's prefiguring it's testifying to Yahshua the Messiah that's why the lamb had to be without spot and blemish because when Yahshua the Messiah came to Pontius Pilate after they had arrested him took him around from pillar to post you know beating him scourging him and you know say if you this you that you know all that you know um this is the lamb without spot and blemish. He went to Pontius Pilate and they had this big, you know, to do. He said, look, shall I give Barnabas to you? Do you want this guy? And they were like, crucify him, you know. So this is a, another type and shadow how they're fulfilling how, how all the children of Israel, they had to kill the lamb. So you have that principle repeated therein later because all the leaders say, look, we want that one on the cross. Let the murderer go. We don't care about him, I suppose. You know, just put Joshua the Messiah on the cross. And plus, his father said, well, look, what did the man do? He said, I find no guile in him. Or I find no fault in him. He has to do that because they had to have a lamb without spot or blemish. So that's the, you know, why that's being said that way. Okay. Uh, continue on. Uh, get Isaiah and John. Yeah. I'll start at Isaiah 53 and 1. Thank you. Uh, and then I'll jump to 7. Who have believed our report? Okay. And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form yeah. nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. So he prefiguring it 
talking about Yahshua the Messiah, see, not some beautiful, glorious, you know, there's going to be a light and, you know, the trumpets are going to, you say, look, he's just going to come. There's no beauty that we should, you know, uh, see of him. He was comely. Continue on. Yeah, you can jump down to seven. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is born as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. So that's talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Remember, he was uh, questioned by Pontius Pilate. See, Yahshua the Messiah did what? Held his plea. Peace was prefigured and is talking about Yahshua the Messiah to come in the law and the prophets. And then John 129. Uh, John 129. The next day, John skipped Yahshua coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh. Which taketh away the sin of the world. So John is talking about the behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world, con continuing to point to and testify how Yahshua the Messiah was a true Lamb. And indeed, when Yahweh Elohim came down, see, as shape and form, or he moved from that pure spirit or abstract state, that print is a principle of coming down or being slain, coming all the way down. He didn't lose no power. See, he's still Yahweh Elohim. Coming Coming down in the flesh, see, lacking to what? Being slain from the foundation of the world or death, see. And so he's talking about Yahshua the Messiah. So Yahshua told the scribes and Pharisees in John 5, 39, ye search the scriptures, for in them you think... Um, for in them you think you have eternal life. Well, why do they think they have eternal life? These are the big boys. These are the Jewish leaders. You know, they walking around all their regalia and all this business, thinking, teaching the other law. He say, look, those things are point to and testify to me. So we see how in the law and the prophets it's talking about the Lamb, prefiguring Yahshua the Messiah. He say, they are they to testify of me. See, but um. Ye will not come to me that you might have life, see. So when John, he's baptizing the Jews out here unto repentance, see, they had to confess their sins, see. Even John called them white-walled sepulchers. They didn't want to come. They don't, I mean, uh, Yahshua called them white-walled sepulchers, but they didn't want to come to repent, see, unto him him but they were being buried unto Yahshua's death and even when Yahshua the Messiah was fulfilled was fulfilling these washings or immersion or baptism he told John in the Matthew the third chapter for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness John I am bringing this stuff to an end and so Yahshua is fulfilling so they got the lamb which is roasted lamb unleavened bread and bitter herbs see and Yahweh Elohim he, he came through that deaf angel came through at midnight they did not have the blood on the inside of their houses see so the blood had to be from the top of the door and the basin and the two side um and they had to strike the door. Well, Yahshua the Messiah, he said, I am the door. So he has a crown of thorns on his head, nails in his hands, and nails in his feet. So he's making a four-point configuration of blood. See, fulfilling how they had the head of blood on the inside of their door. Yahshua the Messiah said, I am the door. So as we're eating and drinking the words of Yahshua the Messiah, we want to have what? The lamb in us. See, we're eating the words. Even Yahshua had talked about that with his disciples. He says, the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Mm. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, so we're eating and drinking in the spirit. Now, folks said, well, you can't do that. Well, yes, we can. Because when Moses went up here, top of Mount Sinai, and he talked about that, and um, they... Uh, they were eating and drinking. I think it's uh, First Corinthians 10, 10 chapter. See, but see, they, they never did say anything about Moses taking any food up there. See, that there was an eating and drinking going on. You can eat and drink, see, and the spirit, see. 
So roasted lamb, unleavened bread, bitter herb. He told the children of Israel, be ready at midnight. The deaf angel would come through. Have your shoes on your feet, staff in the hand. Be ready to go. And the deaf angel did come through and smite firstborn man and beast of those that did not have the blood of the lamb on the inside and not to have the meal inside them. Well, what does that mean? See, we're down here. Now, see, this is, they went through. The divided waters of the Red Sea being led by a cloud. So you have principles of blood, water, and spirit, or death, burial, resurrection. Now we know according to the pattern, see this fourth step, see here, will be likened to that first veil according to the pattern, because all things go according to the pattern. Children of migration go according to the pattern. We're over here in the what? Fourth age, see? Everybody knows something is going on. They don't know how long this stuff going to last. <laughs> it's crazy out here. You know, they're at that fourth step, but they're making their account for the lamb. So we're down here, what? Making our account for the lamb. See, had a blood on the inside because see, Yahshua going to rip the thing out. And we want to have Yahshua and the Messiah in us. See, as a resurrected spirit, not getting there, has to be in us. Okay, so what am you holding Anything I was holding. No. So we got the meal, Matthew 26 and 26. Just want to pick that up because Yahshua and Messiah fulfilled that. He told them, look, go tell a man, I'm coming to your house. And <laughs> that always gets me when you say the potter has power over the clay. And he can tell you what you're gonna do. I'm coming to your house to eat the meal, just get the room prepared. You know, that's just the way it's going now. But he has the power to do it. See, he's the creator of heaven and earth. So, you know, he divided the waters, the seas, he placed the sun in the sky. Look, I'm gonna tell the creation how to operate because I'm the creator. Mm. I can do that. Mm. So I'll just go to his house and tell him we're coming. So <laughs> he's fulfilling, see. So he's fulfilling the Passover because it was instituted under the children of Israel before they were uh, able to leave Egypt. Now they left Egypt by the blood of the lamb. That's how we're going to leave Egypt spiritually and psychologically. No, we're not going to have a Passover meal. We're not going to have some physical blood, but we're eating the word. See, it says the true gospel of how Yahshua died, buried, and was resurrected according to the scriptures. So we're doing the eating and drinking in the spirit and not a physical meal or the crackers and the grape juice. And then, um, so let's get that. And I also want to get Jeremiah 31 and 31. because um, There is a new covenant. This is under the old covenant or old testament that we talked about being uh, nailed to the cross, but there is a new covenant or a new testament that we learned coming down here in this school that Yahshua the Messiah was fulfilling and the new testament or the new covenant is not written in pen and ink, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. So let's uh, get that one if you have it. This is Matthew 26 and 26. And, then, and as they were eating, Joshua took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for, for many for the remission of sin. So Joshua Messiah is fulfilled. He said, and he took the bread or he took the cup and he said, now he's the lamb. See, Joshua Messiah is the true lamb. They had the lamb back there, but there's no lamb going on in the buildings, these churches, unleavened bread and bitter herb. They got the crackers and the wafers ju wa and grape juice. See, that even wasn't even on the menu. It's no longer even valid, but it, but it wasn't to coming down here to this school that Joshua the Messiah was shown teaching us those things that that was fulfilled that was done away with see and so that 
he said there's going to be a new covenant, not like the old, because we're under the new covenant or if, if the new covenant or the new Testament is written in our hearts and we're not under this old thing, see, or we're not no longer dead and carnal and the Messiah is resurrected in us. He's written a new covenant or the new Testament in our heart and in our mind. And what we learn down here that when Yahshua was walking around with his disciples and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they're talking about these things, he's spoke feeling those things, those things that were instituted under the law, see, and the new covenant is and can be written in our heart and in our mind, and it's done by the words, and it talks about my tongue being the pen of a ready writer, so he's writing in our hearts, now the devil want to write some stuff in our heart too, which is hate, malice, strife, do some works of the law, try to earn your way into the kingdom of heaven, that's what the devil, be your own boss, do what you want, want to do, uh, live life the way you choose, uh, be all you can be. These are the words of the devil that has been written in our hearts. And we're coming down here because Joshua has to clean us up from that fleshly stuff. Okay, so let's get that. Jeremiah 31, 31. Uh -huh. Behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the hour. So he said he's going to bring a new covenant, although my covenant they break. They left Egypt by principles of blood, water, and spirit. The cloud was a pillar of fire by night cloud by day. They came up a three-day journey out of Egypt. They gathered round the mount. That's when Yahweh spoke the law down. They said, look, I'm going to make a new covenant, not like the old one, which my covenant, they break. Well, we learned, see, that Yah Moses told uh, them, look, Aaron, Nadab, and by you, 70 elders, you tarry here on the mount. Moses went into the upper plateau of the mount, and Joshua, the son of Nun, transfigured. See, it was truly Yahshua. Moses was up here at the mount, but prior to that, they got married unto Yahweh. They say, all that Yahweh say and do, we will be obedient. And will we do? Well, Moses wasn't up here 40 days. We learned, see, they said, look, we don't know what happened to him. He went up in the fire. Up, oh, make us a God, see, because we're coming from Egypt. We know all about idolatry. <laughs> we know all about making a stone and lifting something up unto look to. So Yahweh said, look, which my covenant they break because they said all that you say Yahweh we will do mm -hmm. but see Yahweh no the law was outside of them and they couldn't keep it you got look I got to put it in you that's the only way you're going to do it as long as it's outside of you you're not going to do it okay continue on 33rd point verse but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days said Yahweh I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their element, and they shall be mine. So Yahweh is, look, he's saying, I'm going to write it in your hearts, not in tables of stone. The law is going to be in you, not outside you. As long as it's outside you, and as long as it's not written within, then there's some works to be done. There's some physical things that people are doing, we've been doing, to try to work on salvation, water baptism, Passover, Lord suffers, all those things, uh, you know, tithing, giving to this fund, giving to that fund, to have favor, being nice, I'll give my reward later in heaven if I do some good for people that need help now. No, those are works of salvation, but that you have to be saved by grace through faith yeah. in Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, continue on. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. So he said, There is no one to teach. You don't need to teach because we've got. Before the comforter, Yahshua is the teacher. You ain't got to do it no more. I'm going to get in the folks to do it. I'm going to be the teacher. And it's going to be the Holy Spirit through the vessel during the teaching. See, not the vessel. The Holy Spirit through the vessel. That's why he's saying, you ain't going to have to teach no more. Okay. Continue on. 
I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. I'm going to move this thing out the way, nail it to his cross, put my spirit in the man, and I'm going to be the one to do the teaching. So let's get 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. Because it's the law that is within, thank you. It's the law that is within or the Holy Spirit poured out within the heart and mind. He fulfilled it. He kept the covenant. I mean, he kept the Passover with his disciples, got water baptized by John the Baptist. Every step Yahshua took, we learned that coming down here to this group of one like it. Now, in the world, they want to put people in the water. You can't be, there's no physical water that you can do to take away hate, malice, strife, all that stuff. They, they you know, you have to be clean through the inner man. Because first we could say, we got an outer body, well, we got an inner body. We have a soul. We have an inner man. He got the scripture, mankind's made body, soul, and spirit. And it's the soul, let's get Romans 8 and 6. That has to be washed. That has to be cleaned up, see? And then Yahshua the Messiah can pour out the gift of the Holy Spirit in our heart and in our mind. So let's get that. Whatever you have there, and then we'll get that. This is 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of the Messiah, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living Elohim, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of See, it's not in tables of stone anymore. Because, see, they couldn't keep it. As long as it's outside of us, we can't keep it. See? And um, they don't want to tell us that. They want to let us think we can work up on our salvation. We can tie, give a tenth of our earnings, get water baptized, be asshole, whatever. Name it, list they got. That's not, he said, in fleshly tables of the heart, written out with pen and ink. We can't do it. They couldn't do it. See, that's what else? Romans 8 and 6, or to 8 5, for the law of the they that are in the flesh be mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit of the of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh. So the carnal mind is at enmity. It's opposed. Let's get Acts 2 and 1. I want to get Acts 10, 44, just to show how Yahshua, the Messiah, the witnesses, he did indeed pour out the gift of the Holy Spirit to mankind. So it says to be carnally minded is death. So when we're dead, we're trying to work upon our salvation. When we're dead, it talks about that in Galatians 19. He said, do mind the things of the flesh. Well, then we learn, if you get over there in Galatians 5.19, I'm going to tell you about the flesh. Hate, malice, strife, envy, jealousy, all those things are works of the flesh. So when to be carnally minded is death, that's fleshly. Spiritually minded is life and peace. And when Yahshua's spirit rests within us, dwells within us, or we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, or we become converted and changed, see, now we can manifest the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness. Not that, you know, those are just the Holy Spirit, really. Not me and not anybody of ourselves. It's the Holy Spirit. See, you can um, have Joshua in you and you're no longer ruled by that stuff. And whatever things that are within us that need to be cleaned up, we go on to the boss or Joshua the Messiah. We don't go to a pope. We don't go to a minister. We don't go to our rabbi. We don't go to a dean. We don't go to a man because we learn down here what? It's the Holy Spirit. He's the comforter. He's the teacher. Mm -hmm. Go on to him. See, and us. Uh, Talk within your house, you know, your closet. This is the closet. This is the house. See, about whatever that is. Okay, let's get those, and then I'm almost out of time. This is Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, 
and it sat upon each of them. So if you could pause right there, because I'm just about out of time, we'll get Acts 10, 44. The Jews are receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, they told them, Yahshua said, look, you stay in Jerusalem to the upper room until you receive power on high. Were they receiving power from on high? And they preached the gospel that day. And so much they thought they were drunk. And they said, these men drunk? They said, no, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they're preaching the gospel, see. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit, as was promised by Yahshua. He would make a new covenant and write it in their hearts and write it in their mind. Now, then the Jews received the Holy Spirit, uh, Gentiles. So let's get Acts 10 44. Acts 10 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the words, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with you, because that on the Gentiles. Also, we pour out the gift of the Holy Spirit. See that? Also on the Gentile, let's get Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It says, look, and they received his word and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They didn't say they ate the Passover. They said they received the word and poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, And they of the circumcision... Those Gentiles, those Hebrews, they knew y'all wasn't a part of the promise before. You were considered dogs. But they also said, hmm, they got it too. So we're done. I, I can't get Ephesians 2, 8, 9. If anything was gained, I'll praise on and glory. All was going to the Ashwood Messiah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 That ends our class for this afternoon session. I would like to thank all the vessels that came forth this afternoon. Just a few announcements, then I have some after class now announcements. We meet publicly at the Best Western Plus Hotel, 4400 Frontier Road in Hillside, Illinois. On Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. and on Mondays and Thursday nights, we are on Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 to 9.30. Twice a month are in person on Thursdays, which will be announced on a monthly basis. Next month, um, there's a little change to the schedule. We will be in person on Monday, April the 15th. And I would like to thank everyone for studying with us today. May we please bow heart to mind in the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and ever. Let the class say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold off on the announcements. Okay. This is this class. Okay. Go. You got it? I have it. Okay, great.